Hello and welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle. And today we're gonna follow up on a previous homeroom where we talked about deadly force or the use of force. Now, a lot of folks out there say, well, you know, I've got a gun and I'll know when, when I should use it. I'll, I'll know when. Well, yeah, you, you may or may not. If you are a new gun owner, if you're a person who has not carried a gun for a living professionally or if you've not been, you've not been through professional training, that you may have questions. You say, well, when am I allowed to? Uh, when can I actually use my gun? Do, am I allowed to take it out of the holster? Am I allowed to point it at someone? When can I? Well, there are three questions that you have to answer in your head quick, fast, and in a hurry when you encounter a situation that may or may not be a deadly force threat. And those uh, questions are ability, opportunity, and intent. Now, when I went to the police academy many years ago, uh, when we went through our uh, law classes, our legal classes, they explained it to us as ability, opportunity, and jeopardy. Now, jeopardy doesn't really, it's not really a good descriptor, so we've kind of, we've kind of changed it over to intent, but they, they mean very similar, thing, similar things. Number one, ability. Does the person who's potentially going to attack you or threaten you have the ability to cause you death or serious bodily harm? Such as, do they possess a weapon? Do they possess a gun, a knife, a baseball bat, a claw hammer? Uh, do they have that ability? Are they larger than you? Are you a five foot two woman that weighs 97 pounds and the person who's about to you know, rape you is a six foot two man who weighs 250? Okay, that is ability. Are there two or three attackers against you alone? And even though their hands might be technically empty, do they have the ability? Yes, the courts recognize that multiple attackers, two or more, attacking a single human being is, <clears throat> excuse me, is the ability to do death or serious bodily harm. You say, well, yeah, it's only two guys and they didn't have guns in their hands so I couldn't do anything or I couldn't use my gun. Brother, if two or three dudes start stomping on you with their empty hands, they can definitely kill you or do serious bodily harm to you. Now let's talk about opportunity. Opportunity is, is the person threatening you, do they have the opportunity to use whatever deadly force tool against you? If someone ha is in possession of a knife and they're 50 yards away from you, they probably don't have, they, although they have the ability because they have a knife in their hand, they don't have the opportunity because somebody with a knife and they're 50 yards away obviously can't stab you. Now, if they have a gun, and you can see them and they can see you, they probably have both the opportunity and the ability. So you have, to, and this is the classic one. People say, uh, well, you know, a guy calls you on the phone and uh, you get into an argument. He says, you're a no good, dirty so-and-so and I'm going to kill you. So you're like, all right, preemptive strike. You get in your truck and you drive to that guy's house and you knock on his door, he opens it and you shoot him. And then your defense is, well, he told me on the phone that, that uh, he hated me and he was going to kill me. Well, what the attorneys are going to say and the judge is going to say is, well, when he told you on the phone that he hated you and he was going to kill you, he did not have the opportunity at that moment to carry out that threat. And, uh, and that, that's kind of a stretch of the imagination, but it's a good explanation for it. Now, intent. This is the big one, intent or jeopardy. Because when you walk into... Let's say you walk into the local Quickie Mart and there's a patrol car there and you see a police officer and he's over refilling his coffee cup. Now when you see that police officer, if he's in uniform, he probably has two of the three. He has the ability because he's in possession of a firearm and he has the opportunity because you're there and he's there. So can you just whip out your gun and shoot him? Well, no, of course you can't do that. Why? Because you haven't checked off the third block. And the third block is the big one its intent or demonstrated intent. If you ever have to use a firearm in self-defense, one of the big questions they're gonna ask you is, why did you believe you were in fear of death or serious bodily harm? And you need to be able to explain. You say, well, because I was walking in my car and a guy said, hey, you, stop, and he pulled out a gun. Okay, that's pretty, you know, pretty crystal clear. Uh, or a dude, guy comes out and he says, I freaking hate you and I'm going to kill you. And he starts to attacking you. Okay, you take him at his word. 
But seeing someone in your, you know, in your area of operation who happens to also be in possession of a firearm is not de facto deadly force. You have to have that third one, that intent and that jeopardy. You have to understand that and you have to be able to articulate that. They say, well, that's a pretty tall order. Well, you know, we live right now in a nation of laws and I don't think you'd want people just walking around shooting up people because they didn't like the way they looked. Well, you're not allowed to either. So if you're going to use a firearm for home defense, for personal defense, out away from your home, you need to understand that before you can justifiably use that, and pointing a gun at someone without firing it is the threat of deadly force. So you can't say, well, I'm, I'll just point it at them and won't really shoot them. No. No, when you point a gun at someone, if you demonstrate intent, then you're either justified or you're not. And how are we justified? Well, we're justified by explaining or articulating that the person had the ability, the opportunity, and they had the intent to use both of those. All right, so keep that in mind. Now, uh, all this material that I'm talking about here, uh, about deadly force and is so forth, you can find out more if you're interested. Go to studentofthegungear.com and you can order the Armed Living DVD. Uh, Armed Living, Concealed Carry in an, an Uncertain World. And uh, all the material that we've discussed here, plus a lot more, is detailed in that training DVD. Now our book for today... This is a, another follow-up to a previous book we talked about. Now, previously I talked to you about Black Hawk Down. And I said you should go ahead and order it and read it because it's been almost 20 full years. Well, this one right here is called In the Company of Heroes. It's by Michael J. Durant. Now, Michael Durant was one of the helicopter pilots. He was one of the two Black Hawk pilots that went down in Mogadishu. Now, the, the other one died uh, there, but Michael was injured grievously, and he was captured, and he was held prisoner for, I believe, two weeks before they uh, released him. But Mike Durant wrote the book, and it's about his experiences and what he saw. So it is a first-hand account of what actually went down in Mogadishu 20 years ago. So uh, in the company of heroes, it's a good read. We'll put an Amazon link up for you guys, and you can check it out. For everything Student of the Gun, where you want to go? Obviously, you want to go to studentofthegun.com.